close your eyes and gather your awareness at the breath. Notice when your breath is coming in, when it's going out, stay with the breath all the way in, all the way out. We've come today to make merit to dedicate it to the late King Rama the Ninth. We've given gifts and now's the time to meditate. When you give the gift of your meditation, try to make your mind one, because the mind, when it's one, has the highest value of all. If you have lots of different thoughts, lots of different ideas running through your mind, it's all scattered all over the place. You want to lift the quality of your mind to make a gift that you're proud to give. Okay, make it one, right here with the breath. Any other thoughts that come in right now, just let them go. It's good to think about the goodness that Rama the Ninth left behind. Forty years ago, in the 200th anniversary of the founding of Bangkok, he gave an address to the Thai people. He gave as the, basic for the basis for the address four dhammas that come from the Pali Canon that the Buddha taught to a yaksha one time, which are said to be the dhammas of lay people. And the basic of the dhamma is to talk, talk about how you can be a true person, true in your duties, true in your determinations. The list starts with the truth, satcha. Whatever you decide is good to do, you actually do it. You don't go just for the appearance sake, but you do whatever is genuinely good for yourself, genuinely good for others. And you stick with it, regardless of the difficulties that may come. Then the other members of the list that the Buddha gave expand on that. One of the qualities is Dhamma, D-A-M-A, which means self-control. In other words, you don't give rein to your emotions, you don't give rein to your feelings, especially if they're getting in the way of doing what you know is it should be done. In particular, you don't give rein to anger. When things come up that are obstacles to doing what's good, you don't let yourself get angry about them. If there is anger, then you learn how to control yourself so the anger doesn't come out. It's a little bit much to ask for lay people to be totally free of anger, greed, and delusion. But you can gain some control on, over how much you express. So you want to make sure you express nothing of any anger that comes into the mind, nothing of any greed. It's as if you have tigers in your house. Well, keep them in the house. Don't let them go wandering out around in the neighborhood, causing trouble for the neighbors, because that'll be trouble for you too. Then there's the quality of kanti, which is endurance. Whenever you want to work for something that really is of good value and stick to that, you have to endure lots of difficulties, but you have to learn how to deal with the pain, deal with other people's unkind words, discouraging words. As the Buddha once said, when you hear discouraging words, just tell yourself, an unpleasant sound has made contact at the ear, and just leave it there. Don't bring it into the mind. And that way you don't weigh yourself down. So it's a lot easier to endure what other people say. Most of us don't leave it at the ear, we drag it in and it reverberates throughout the mind. But the contact ended a long time ago. Whatever suffering you have from what other people have said, once it's said, and the remaining suffering is basically your responsibility to make sure that you don't give in to that. And same with physical pain. You learn how to be with physical pain and not let it overcome the mind. Learn how to see the pain as something separate. Your awareness is one thing, the body is something else, and the pain is something else. When you learn how to see it in that way, you can endure a lot of pain that otherwise would overwhelm you. And finally, there's the quality of relinquishment. There are things you're going to have to give up if you want to gain what's good. As the Buddha said, if you see a greater happiness that comes from letting go of a lesser happiness, you're willing to let go of the lesser happiness for the sake of the greater one. Most of us though, don't want to let go. We want to play chess. We want to win and keep all of our pieces. But you have to realize, in order to win, there are some things you're going to have to let go. Otherwise, nothing gets accomplished in life. So if you have these four qualities working together, truth, self-control, endurance, and relinquishment, then whatever of substance you want to accomplish in this life can get done. Remember, we're not here just for appearances' sake. We're here for genuine goodness, something that, is, that will be our nourishment both in this lifetime and in the lifetimes in the future. So given that it is your nourishment, you want to fix it well. Make sure there's solid, solidly nutritious food that you're preparing, because that will keep you healthy and strong for a long time to come. Here, of course, we're talking about the health and the strength of the mind. The strength of the body someday will have to fade away. The health of the body will fade away. But the strength of the mind doesn't have to fade. Make sure that you build on that as much as you can. And the more merit you make, the Buddha doesn't call that greed, he calls it being industrious. It's something he praises. 
And then when you have a lot of merit, then you can dedicate it to others, and they'll be happy to receive your merit because it has genuine value. So we think about the goodness of the king. He himself was a person who was true. He exemplified all four of these qualities of the working royals of the world. He was the one who worked the hardest, worked the most for the sake of his people. And Thailand is what we have it now, is really benefit from it. Here with Wat Meta, we benefited from what he did as well. Because it was because he kept Thailand together in all those years when other countries in the area were falling apart, that the Ajans had the opportunity to practice. People from other nations came, had the opportunity to practice with the Ajans. Now they can bring the Dharma out to the rest of the world as well. So whether you're a Thai or not Thai, you're indebted to him. So a good way of showing your debt is to show your gratitude by practicing the Dharma, remembering the teachings that he left behind. Because they, of course, there are the Buddhist teachings as well. They're dedicated to making sure that whatever goodness we have in life is going to be genuine goodness, true goodness, because we're true people.